ఓకే లెట్ స్టార్ట్ విత్ ఎస్ఎల్ఎస్ ఫస్ట్ ఓకే ఎస్ ఎస్ఎల్ఎస్ ఫస్ట్ ఓకే బిఫోర్ గోయింగ్ టు ఎస్ఎల్ఏ లెట్ డిస్కస్ రిగార్డింగ్ ఏజెంట్స్ ఓకే ఏజెంట్ ఓకే వాట్ ఈస్ అన్ ఏజెంట్ ఇన్ పెగా వాట్ ఈస్ అన్ ఏజెంట్ లైక్ ఏజెంట్ ఈస్ అన్ వెరీ లైక్ ఇన్ ఇంటర్వ్యూ పర్స్పెక్టివ్ ఆల్సో people will ask so many tricky questions on agents and also agency is something a very like it would be if you got the result okay it would be very fun and all but if you didn't get it would be very hectic task to actually to debug the issues to trace it and all okay agency is very good actually and uh, okay let us start with agents like a okay first first of all i'll explain it theoretically and then we'll see how to configure an agent okay yeah um agency a agents actually are, are are automatic processes which will run on a node what is a node node is a server our application will be hosted on one particular server right so agents also will run on that server run in the sense agents will also execute on that server okay agents are automated processes which will run on nodes nodes in the sense servers okay the actual definition is fine right the agents are automated processes automated in a sense you actually no need to invoke them it will run on its own agents are automatic processes which will run on background or or also you can say uh, it will run on server it will run on background processing agent is a background processing background processing in the sense no human intervention is required no one can come and execute it it will automatically run on its own you just remember agent agent is a background processes which will run on a which will run on a server server or node okay now i'll tell you what it will execute it will execute okay it will execute by its own on background but what it will execute that is a question right what it will actually run on background it will execute an activity we have we have already discussed an activity right it will yes. have that step pages so whatever the activity we are providing an agent that agent will run that activity on that server okay now first thing is like what it will run and when it will run we need to define a particular time to run like we have to de- define you run at morning 6 o'clock it will automatically run on server at morning 6 o'clock okay what it will run it will run an activity it will execute an activity without any human intervention it is a, it is all background processing it will happen by itself now we have two types of agents okay one is a standard agent one is an advanced agent okay just assume we have two types of agents one is a standard agent one is an advanced agent now what is the difference between standard and advanced in case of stand okay this is also an interview question okay the difference between standard and advanced agent standard agent standard agent generally people will use okay i will tell which agent you, which which type of agent you will use in which scenario and then we'll tell you the differences okay standard agents are used for case processing standard agents are used for case processing what is case processing suppose okay suppose let's think uh, you have up, you for suppose you have completed your prohibition period every company every organization will be having some prohibition period right some 3 months 6 months then only you will become permanent employee correct now for suppose dilip has completed his 6 months by today okay so what uh, the system will do system will generate a automated email uh yeah attaching some document saying that your prohibition period is ended this is so this is your permanent employee letter or some this is your uh, uh, this is your employee information let some 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 automated email will trigger right but no one in the background will will actually daily check the check the employee status right suppose the an organization will be having some lakhs of employees no one in the background will uh, every day come and check uh, like uh, whoever employees has completed they will not send it manually right by clicking on uh, by actually entering their email address send 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 they will not do it and people will not hire also for that kind of jobs no one will work also so how actually system is invoking there is an agent in the background 
which is used for this purpose like if the agent will take care it will run every day on a server on a background without any human intervention it will run on a background it will every day it will based on some logic based on some uh, current date and and based on date of joining based on some logic what we have implemented it will trigger an email now for this purpose for triggering an emails okay for triggering an emails or to send some notifications or actually to pick some file from a uh, or to pick from files from some uh, some locations to send some files okay these kind of things are performed by advanced agents generally okay generally people will configure advanced agents for these purposes okay you can also configure standard agent also but it is not used it is not that much uh, better i'll tell you the difference okay advanced agents are called job schedulers job schedulers in the sense what they will do they will perform one job job in the sense they will actually send some email send some notification in some uh, some other thing they will do okay what advanced agents will do is like advanced agents will actually do these kind of tasks now what standard agents will do what standard agents will do suppose okay uh suppose you have a uh, let me give an example let me think okay okay suppose how actually the advanced agents perform is like i'll tell you how we are utilizing in our application okay there are two systems okay one is pega system one is another banker system banking applications right so one is pega system that is a pega application and another thing is an uh, some other application some other uh, some other third party application like you as you okay now what happens that third party application will adds one record to a database every day okay every day what it will do every day it will add one new record to a database table okay now what we have to do is like we need to pick that record and we need to process the case process the case in the sense we have to move forward or we have to something we need we need to do some case processing not like sending emails or uh, or not like sending notification we have to progress the case suppose uh, dilip has got promotion today like promotion in the sense from some senior manager to some development lead or some delivery lead okay you have got in email today but the system has not got updated till now there is an agent in the background which will change every day the employee roles your role has to be changed in the system right no one will manually go like whoever got the whoever got the promotion manually no one will go and update the system no one will update it this standard agents will actually do some processing case processing case processing in the sense they will update db tables they will delete a record they can modify a record that those tasks are taken care by standard agents so standard agents are called queue processors queue processors what is meant by queue queue is nothing but a a set of items suppose you have suppose you have 10 employees now the queue length is 10 it will process each and every employee one by one one by one one by one previously what is the case it will not update any tables or anything it will trigger some emails trigger some notifications like that that is an advanced agent that is called job schedulers okay now this is a standard agent stand that agent is called queue processor standard agents are called they are called uh, mm, 
क्यू प्रोसेसर्स एडवांस एजेंट्स आर कॉल्ड जॉब शेड्यूलर्स ओके नाउ दिस अ वेरी हाई लेवल अंडर ओके दिस is a high level understanding okay not very high level this is a normal understanding what is an agent if, if suppose in interview someone asked you what is an agent agent is a background processing which runs on a server okay what are the types of agents we have two types of agents standard agent and advanced agent what does standard agent do standard agent will actually do case processing okay you can write in the beside somewhere like uh, after standard agent yeah you can you do the case processing what does advanced agent will do advanced agent will trigger some emails or notification those kind of process will trigger emails or generate pdf or send letters in bank now you have to send a letters uh, acknowledgement letters you need to send to customers some uh, similar to you will get a credit card statements right those kind of yes. letters or emails pdf okay that is an advanced agent now let's see before going why see actually standard agent is also capable of sending emails letters and all and advanced agent is also capable of case processing it is capable but we will not configure it so we'll actually see what are the advantages and disadvantages so that you will be understanding it before that we'll see how actually an agent looks like click on records So expand the technical last part one. Yeah, do you have agents? No, don't you have? No? Okay, expand C segment. Sorry, sorry, expand C segment. Top of technical. You have agents, right? Second one. Okay, agents. You have very few in this thing. you are click on any of the agent okay you, can you expand the first agent the first one is there na expand it okay. okay let's come from the start okay now if you see this is one agent okay agent name is adm snapshot that is a background processing that will run okay every day the background processing that is an advanced agent if you see it is uh, the mode is advanced you click on the advanced mode is there right column mode you yeah, click on that see they have made, made that one is advanced legacy is not the, there no one will use legacy advanced is standard okay this is an advanced agent see the third one is a standard agent you can see right third one they have yes. mentioned standard yes. that's an advanced and standard you have to configure it here where to configure means here you need to select the mode okay now if you see pattern pattern is there right pattern is recurring and uh, the second one is yeah this is good see pattern sec first one is recurring second one is startup third one is periodic okay now let's see what is our first let's see what is the startup startup in this is whenever a server restarts okay whenever server ah, actually yes. restarts right on start on a start of a server it will execute this agent this agent will get executed okay 
what is periodic yeah, periodic in the sense you see in periodic you have adv- that five right see that is periodic agent it has five means it will execute for every five minutes sorry it okay, will execute okay, for every okay. five seconds okay that is a second interval you can see on the top column right interval yes yeah. it will execute on every five five seconds that periodic what is periodic periodic will execute like 2 minutes 5 minutes 10 seconds like that but if you need something like uh, every monday morning 6 o'clock you need every weekly once suppose there are some uh, things called managers managers want to see weekly reports like what is the progress of this week so monday morning before uh, uh, before joining the call they need to see the report like the performance report so Correct. you will configure as a, you, uh, you will actually schedule one agent to actually uh, send the report to manager that will be uh, generally that will be an advanced agent because you are actually doing the, the reporting email right reporting some excel sheet or something or yes. some pdf so it will be an advanced agent and the pattern will be pattern will be recurring if you click on the advanced button is there right advanced button click on the advanced button here you can configure whatever you required whenever you need the document to be sent see oh okay okay start time we get what time you need okay daily monthly and time zone because operators will be in different different locations right correct and and applications also will be in different error servers and all so at what time if you select weekly you select weekly it is daily right you select weekly no 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 on the left side you have daily weekly monthly weekly see which day it is asking saturday monday tuesday you understand or if you select yes. monthly monthly the configuration will change see on the day of first month or every month or first day of every month you select yeah yeah you just click on monthly yeah and you select that first is there na click on first click on first yeah see first day second day third day fourth day last day that is how the pega has given you the configuration correct this is a very simple you just see inside that one inside agent now we are just looking at the agent this is when it will run okay this is what when it will run periodic recurring or startup what it will run it will run an activity you see there is an activity name inside an agent see the class the activity name is there right yeah that one. they are they are executing that particular activity of that particular class that activity will get invoked at that particular recurring time every day how we are configured below you have run the is agent only on one node at a time is there right that is for uh, some performance issues if all the agents run on all the nodes there might be some performance impact the duplicate if the letters will will trigger two three times single letter will trigger two three times like that yes so this one uh, we have got an issue in production recently for this kind of configuration so there is one letter called acknowledgement letter which we will send to the customer like if you have raised any complaint you will generally raise one uh, trigger one email right acknowledgement Correct. email they some developer has uh, checked this one uh, see they have not checked this one so then what happened uh, that the email used to go for two three times uh, for the complaint uh, then what will be happening it will uh, trigger the email uh, on all the notes at a time correct it will process kind of each case multiple that. times yeah yes so you have to ch- uh, check that one uh, that one uh, okay mm-hmm. now let's see the differences the main differences between a standard and advanced you know what will happen generally why standard agents are called standard agents are called see i will be a bit confusing oh can you open that notepad see, why, yeah why standard agents are called queue processors why advanced agents are called job schedulers i'll tell you if suppose one agent is processing uh suppose let's take a dilip as an employee dilip has got promotion okay that uh, agent will update uh, at uh, every day 6 o'clock all the employees who got promoted today it will it will update change the role change 
change the role means to change dilip role what we have to do you have to open you have to open dilip's employee record from the database you have to pick the employee record like you have to do obj open open the record you do property set from role you change the role and again you obj save you commit to the changes you understand it's a very simple if you want yes, to make yes. up if you want to update anything you just assume it is an dba as an a big sheet of excel sheet okay you have to identify the dilips record in that uh, big sheet you have to identify dilips record by which uh, uh, um, like what is the key of a table key of a table might be uh, employee id because employee id will be unique so you will do obj open with employee id that record that that the particular dilips record will be now present on a clipboard page okay Perfect. on clipboard page page you will do property set property set role is equal to some senior manager you will set it after setting it now the data is present on clipboard now you have to commit it right then only the changes will happen in a db right db yes okay now it, uh, this is a basic activity okay this is a basic activity it will be for list of employees right every day so you have to loop it loop on obj open so it will open each one by one record one by one record one by one record it will do it now what happened uh, okay dilip has changed his phone number phone number he has changed it now what he is doing he has updating his phone number he has opened his record like open his record in, in his profile he is changing his phone number now if you remember the locking concept only one operator or one agent or only one thing can update a single row the lock lock will be acquired by that one if suppose dilip is updating his phone number he will open it and he will click on edit right he will click on edit then what happens that particular dilip record will be locked by dilip's operator not Sorry. by agent now what the, the agent will do agent will try to open this record okay then what will happen the agent will get failure message like uh, the lock is uh, like the lock cannot be acquired the some message you will get and obj open will get fail you cannot modify a same record at a particular point of time by two people after one people has completed his update then only an another one can do it right two people cannot do a single record modification at its same time same particular point of time so what will happen agent will fail now if agent fails what does it do that is a first question how standard agent behaves and how advanced agent behaves that is a second question now i'll tell you for standard agent if if suppose agent fails standard agent fails it will it will actually it will actually append that particular record to broken item you have a broken items i'll show you how to check a broken item it will it will it will append that record to broken items and after completing all the records it will requeue the items if suppose in if suppose there are 10 items in those 10 items three items got failed those three items will be present in broken queue after the original queue is completed it will again requeue the broken queue it will start working on broken items again it will retry for two times i think here if you minimize this one here somewhere you can set a retry limit also come down come, come down enable this agent this is a down huh? all down this is what all down yes uh here enable agent go to the top security or node somewhere you go here security nodes can you go Yeah, somewhere you can set a retry limit also actually okay okay generally i forgot where you can set it by default it will be like three times i think okay it will retry for three times today if it doesn't happen it will uh, do for next day tomorrow okay that is the main purpose of advanced that is a advantage of ad, uh, that is a advantage of standard agent sorry okay that is an advantage of standard agent if something fails system will take care of itself okay you have an you have an concept 
software called AutoQM management (AQM). AQM will be present for advanced agent. AQM in this is AutoQM management. It will auto it will automatically queue the broken items. Okay. Yes. And it will retry. Okay. But in case of advanced agents, if something fails, you need to handle the error handling part. How to do? Whether you have to requeue or you have to send an email to manager, or these like uh, so and so items failed, or you have to retry it tomorrow morning. How should you do that part of ed that part? Like that the error handling part is not present for advanced agent. Advanced agent, we need to configure the error handling. But if you open the the first one, expand the first one. That is an advanced agent. Right? Error handling. Where you will do the error handling? You will do in the activity only. Open the activity. If something fails, if something OBJ open fails, the activity will fail. Okay, agent is just like invocation. Invocation. It will just invoke. If something fails, what it will fail? The activity fails. If activity fails, you need to handle it. You need to handle it on your own custom logic. Like uh, how should you actually do it? That is the main difference between standard and advanced agent. Okay, now let's see. If suppose a triggering, there there is a very rare chance that email triggers fails, right? Email sending emails will never fail, right? Because there is no locking, there is nothing is there, right? Oh, there are so many activities inside this one, so they might actually see. This is an advanced agent, right? In advanced agent, see all that they are doing is notifications. Some notifications they are doing, data DM notification, call data DM notification, capture snapshots. See, generate notifications for adaptive models. They are writing, right? See, this is an advanced agent. Inside advanced agent, you have this activity. Okay. See, actually, advanced. Agents are also capable of doing case processing, but if something fails, if something fails, if some locking or some something fails, then it will auto queue in case of standard agent. But in case of advanced agent, you have to take care. So that's why without all those headaches, without you having all those headaches, what you will do? People will generally configure standard agents for case processing. Advanced agents for see this kind of agents. This is an advanced agent activity. These are like for sending notifications, generating PDFs, reports. Most of the times, it will not fail, right? Yes. Sending emails, generating reports. Right? If it fail, also, it is not that much big issue. Like sending an email, you can also send it one day late. That is okay. Yep. But case processing that should not be. He actually, it should not become late, right? It has to be done by today. If suppose you got a credit card statement, if you got it tomorrow, also it's okay for you. Generally, people will yes. not check right those emails and all. It's okay if you, if it got late also, but uh, case processing you have to do it by today. So, so what is happening? Standard agents are for, are for standard agents are for queue processors. Those are called queue processors. Okay. Advanced agents are called job schedulers. Job schedulers. If you open the if you open any standard agent below, you have standard agent right. Open that activity. That's Standard agent activity. Last one, I think. This is also an advanced. Last one is standard, right? Correct. Yeah. Find it. See, see that one. I am saying uh, auto queue management is enabled. See, advanced bill. Ah, yes, yes, yes. That checkbox. For uh, for that one, you don't have the checkbox. You you if you expand the advanced agent, expand the second one. There is no auto queue no. management. Right? Yes. Here, yes. auto queue management is it will auto queue. It will requeue the broken items. Okay. And there is some configuration also. Some it will retry for uh, three times. I didn't remember. I will tell you. Okay, where that is all present. But you understand the basic idea, right? Ah uh, yes, 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 sir. And see, it has ma max records. How many records it has to process? If you have some one lakh records, it will not process all the one lakh records. You have to specify maximum record. If you ex if you open that uh, agent activity, you can see how this is configured. See this one, this agent activity, standard agent activity. You saw advanced agent there sending some notifications, right? This standard agent, you open it. 
see they are doing some obj open see i told you mostly they will do obj open see they will open the record they will do some uh, property sets and all last they are doing committing see in the 13th in the 11th step they are doing committing to the database correct if suppose something goes wrong it will requeue because you have checked that auto queue management yes okay now what happened in the recent versions of pega okay the agents okay if suppose you want to you want to process uh, something called uh, 10000 records the agent is taking 2 to 3 minutes of time like 2 2 minutes 3 minutes to complete those those 10000 records like actually if you if suppose there are some uh, 10000 employees who got promotion today because it's an appraisal cycle week there are some 10000 employees it is taking 2 3 minutes of time system is taking 2 3 minutes of time or else it is taking some 15 minutes of time so the performance here the performance matters here so what pega has done pega has kept this agents in these versions but they have separately introduced a concept called job schedulers and queue process see there is one more rule called job schedulers if you come down in the alphabet j on the left side in records you know in the records you have open agents right similarly yes. you have job schedulers and queue ah, process yes, yes, yes. That, that, uh... yeah, you can op- no no not in technical here only you don't yeah and the there here right B- bottom of hadoop yeah there on that is all. see job schedule they have differentiated the rule job scheduler is nothing but job scheduler is nothing but a standard agent right open that notepad open that. yeah yeah job scheduler is nothing but advanced agent okay instead of agent okay they have introduced two new concepts called job schedulers and queue process job schedulers is nothing but an advanced agent the processing is all same but how it is processing in the background that is different pega has changed the background thing how it will execute and all and it improved the performance job schedulers are nothing but advanced agents but in latest versions of pega to they have improved that processing on the server and they have improved the performance and they have created a new rule type called job schedulers job schedulers are nothing but advanced agents okay sorry yes see what ha- happened they haven't removed it if suppose any new functionality came in pekka they will deprecate the old versions okay they will deprecate the old version deprecate in the sense they will no longer users can create but what happened agents are some very important concept so they haven't deprecated it they have kept it as it is agents now also you can create an agent but what the leads and all will suggest is to create a job schedule or queue process because these are all best performance they can easily execute like uh, if suppose agent takes 5 uh, minutes for 10000 records job schedule takes only 1 minute to process 10000 records so what uh, what it takes generally people will try to configure these things only right yes. both are functional wise they are same anything you can use but background processing will be there right background how it is processing mm-hmm. okay let me tell you you have two laptop one is the latest version laptop one is 2008 version like uh, 2008 uh, 2008 eight model okay both laptops if you open word document okay both laptops will open ms word only functionality is same but the latest version will perform that in some 2 seconds but old version takes the performance from 2 minutes or something for the new version they have changed the name from advanced agent to they have changed the name to job scheduler the processing is different in the background we are we are least bothered about it actually opening ms word uh, one word document we are least we least bothered how it is open it we only bothered about how fast it is opening right similarly job schedulers will process the tasks if suppose there are some 10000 people you need to send an email it will process in one minute 
when you while you have configured the same thing in agents it will take something like 2 3 minutes still then agents have given why pega has given an ability to create an agent they can simply remove that ability itself right we have given queue processor rule also come down you can see queue process on the left side left side if we come down the records they have given queue processor also see why pega has still given a uh, a functionality to implement agents is like only because of upgrades if some upgrade is happening you have an agent in your lower version uh, upgrade but you don't have job schedulers in a lower version right when you're upgrading it those will cause lot of problems so keep old agents as agents only if you are anything configuring a newer thing then do it on job schedulers or queue process open a queue processor you have opened last tab is there right open open any one any one index sir Here it will see this is also same background processing it, it is also if you come down there is also class there is also activity come down see processing activity is there processing class is see maximum maximum items is there here i'm telling you right to queue similar to standard agent that's what i'm i'm saying see the functionality is same but the background how it is doing the performance has improved that's it you have two machines one machine is in running in latest software one is in like old 10 years back software if you have assigned some task like if you have assigned to open a document or if open a document then the new machine will open the same document same same application that is ms word only it's the same document it will open in 2 seconds but old machine it is all the same document dot doc only same same ms word only same uh, same yeah ms for 2022 only but still the machine is different which is processing it so it will take very it fast yes two minutes time right similarly this one this job schedule the functionality is same but the background we are least bothered about it actually we only need performance improvement how they have improved the performance we are not bothered about it right Yeah, if suppose someone asked you, what is the difference between standard agents and the advanced? Sorry, standard agents and uh, this queue process. There is no difference on functionality side. There is a difference in performance. Yes, got it. Yeah. And if you go little deeper, okay, if you go little deep, okay, Pega is using there is a one technology called Kafka technology. Kafka is a technology name which was developed by LinkedIn. Okay, Pega is using that Kafka methodology in the queue processors and job schedulers. If you search in Google, you can search in Google. Uh, job Kafka methodology or a queue processors in Google, you can search. Right? No, no, don't open this Kafka, but uh, you can search it. Uh, job schedulers in Pega, you can search. Job scheduler in Pega. Yeah, click on it. Come down. If you come down, yeah. if you read read any post, yeah, you click on that. My no Pega is there, na? That one I think they have made a paid thing. Then I open it. I think they have made that one a paid website. Yeah, come down. Do you get any Kafka here? I think they have made it premium. But generally, you understand the methodology they are using is Kafka methodology. You can read it somewhere. Okay. For a, for a little background, I think. Okay, guys, you can Kafka. Yeah. Yeah, you can open it. That one, Kafka is stream processing. That was actually developed by LinkedIn. What I have heard, Kafka and uh, is like uh, they have taken that platform from LinkedIn. LinkedIn has developed that Kafka services and all. They are utilizing that uh, functionality in the background processing. If you come down, they will like explain it. Come down still. 
and the shall not come up no no come down that will large matter is there right some points they have mentioned on the top on the top yeah here is this so huh? no 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 someone has commented right actually you have to go through it yeah this is same process building a real time pipeline is so provides a throughput see it, it has very low latency these are all regarding job schedulers so, okay it's about your vertical now the stream is come down still see kafka is highly configurable and has been configured in a way to best service pega deployment i would encourage you to work with default settings you but uh, these are all very high, high level but you actually doesn't require this staff kernel but still you understand right what is the job should yeah. you said yes, yes. yeah. okay okay now let's see what is an sla okay now let's see what okay i'll explain it theoretically and then we'll see how to do it see sla sla full form is service level agreement okay service level agreement suppose for everything for every task uh, there is some time right there is some time bound task right suppose you are placing an order you have left your payment gateway like that for 3 minutes what will happen session will expire right yes that task has some time bound like you have to complete that in 3 minutes okay or else suppose you are a premium customer you have some subscription or something like subscription and some off road assistance your vehicle was broke down some flat tire or something you have called the customer care within 2 minutes they have to assign a customer care executive to you because you have a premium customer so the time bound thing for that task is 2 minutes correct okay. and let's take another example you have some fraud transaction you have lost some money from your atm account atm bank bank account okay now you have only 30 days of time to actually register a, to actually register a customer care complaint that is a time bound limit on you whenever something happens that is a stipulated time you have to take an action everything in pega not only in pega everything in our real life not only in our day to day life also everything is time bound right yes you have to complete this one in this time you have to do this task in this particular time everything is time bound suppose you are placing an order okay you have added your items to a cart this is a food delivery application let's say food delivery application means every hour to hour items will be changing right suppose you have added your items some biryani to your cart now what happened you have left the item like that after 30 minutes you have placed the order but what happened in 15 minutes only the the restaurant owner has actually removed the item from the drop down they have deleted that record because the biryani is already completed in the restaurant but you have already added the item to the cart so you can able to place it that is not a good practice right at exactly at 11 at exactly at 11 o'clock you have added one biryani to your cart okay. and at 11:15 the it is still in the cart and at 11:15 and the biryani was completed in the restaurant and they have removed that option from the drop okay now you came at 11:30 and you placed that order because you have already chosen that one you have because if they have something was removed from the drop down it will be not available so you have to keep some time on process to check out items like 5 minutes or to whenever you have added the items to your cart the item has to be you have to place the order which is or else or else again the cart will become zero okay if you open the sla rule can you open the sla rule 
process i think it will be in process lowers and all will be present in the process yeah i have it right service level agreement you understand the basic definition of service level agreement right? before opening it what is a service level agreement if you want to define any time bound on a particular assignment okay you you have to configure sla on that assignment i'll show you how to configure but you understand the definition right any time bound yes, process are defined yeah. with sla sla is a service level agreement okay if you open one sla rule can you open in one of the sla okay you have opened the sla rule now you see here let's think you okay let's how to tell okay okay now let's i will explain you one by one here suppose you have placed you have came to your cart like you have added one item to your cart okay then immediately after adding to the cart itself okay immediately adding an item to the cart itself the time has to trigger right correct correct yes so never the assignment is ready immediately you have to trigger it okay suppose see if suppose uh, dilip is working in a normal shift he is some working as an um, customer representative some uh, some customer care support if suppose some ticket was assigned to him like uh, some kind of customer request has assigned to him okay now it was assigned to him if suppose the sla time is 2 days he has to finish that customer request in 2 days okay that one is actually immediately whenever it was assigned to you from that moment onwards it will trigger like trigger in the sense it will trigger maybe it will be something like uh, 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 suppose it was for 2 days and and uh, and on friday you have got the ticket okay friday you have got the ticket from 2 days is in the friday means friday suppose friday and saturday but saturday is a holiday right people will not work on saturday so immediately will not work for all the situations okay immediately will not work for all the situations so if you click on that immediately click on that immediately whenever assignment is ready or you can time delayed you can delay some time also or you can dynamically define in property also you can define you can set some property value and you can set it it will automatically based on that one it will trigger okay if suppose there is an employee he is working from night shift okay he is he is working from 6 o'clock every day so if suppose some customer request was uh, assigned to him whenever in the morning time he is not available so that is, is that a good practice to trigger the time interval because it came out of his working hours right yes so what they will do they will delay some time or they will dynamically set the time for each and every employee okay from that particular time bound it will trigger the sla for that for that employee okay. and uh, here you have goal and deadline okay i will tell you what is a goal and deadline goal is a best time to complete the assignment suppose uh, a deadline is 3 days goal is always less than deadline so see deadline is 3 days goal is 2 days if you complete that particular work which was assigned to you in 2 days that is good okay that is good but that the maximum time maximum time to actually maximum time to actually complete the task so that is the sla deadline is the maximum time you have to within that time that task has to be completed okay goal is like best time suppose let's assume you have a you added a food item to the cart deadline is 5 minutes goal is 3 minutes if he places an order within 3 minutes it is best a way to actually proceed with now what is the use of goal you can ask right what is the use of goal then people will generally work within deadline then what is the use of goal okay the use of goal is like whenever goal time is reached okay you can do some action perform some action See, sometimes you will get a notification from Zomato or Swiggy like food is waiting in your cart, or some notification you will get. Right? So whenever that goal time is reached, you will note 
notify the customer okay you notify the customer that phones are actually pending from your end okay okay you select the goal here they have done two days at the goal time and if you see the actions here on the left on the right side you have actions there you click on select an action you click on select action click on that select action see whenever goal time is done you are doing some actions click on the drop down see you can notify assignee notify your manager notify the party or you can you know talk or you can do some custom activity you can run or you can if you are running an activity in activity you can do anything right you can trigger an email also correct right. so whenever the goal time is reached based on a customer requirement you can perform all these things okay so what happens in swiggy and zomato whenever the food is waiting in your car whenever goal time is reached it will trigger a notification it will then notify assign you shall have notify assign you shall have notify assign notify assign it is asking when rule and it will trigger some default message some message will be there for assign any notification signal that message will be triggered see i am telling you goal is less than deadline every time every time yes yes goal is two days deadline is three days okay goal you open any slr rule okay not only this one you can open any slr rule and check every time goal is less than deadline every time goal is dead, less than deadline time and goal is the best time to complete it or best time to notify the customer or an employee we have it maybe suppose uh, it's a best time suppose uh, you every friday you need to submit a time sheet to submit a time sheet you will get an email reminder every friday if you didn't submit it you will get a notification kind of thing suppose then the goal time is to submit it before friday like by friday 6 o'clock but that but the deadline will be before monday you understand Correct. and similarly for deadline also you can take an action you see there is an action right you can perform any other action you can um, you can uh, you can notify manager also if suppose he has crossed the deadline okay you can uh, notify the manager also okay if you click on your operator below below on the left side you have your here right operator bottom left you yeah, open your, your operator and uh, <laughs> Yeah, if you open your operator, go to your uh, work work tab. Is it work? You here? If you saw, come down. Oh, where is it? Where is it? You have reports to. Yeah, you see the reports is there, right? There generally everything in an uh, organization will be SSO. Okay, that is single sign on. Yes, so yes, yes. Yes. operator will be having a reports to you can click on reporting structure it will show you whom you are reporting actually this is an admin right so it will not show you anything you can check in your organization it will show you to whom you are reporting so it will trigger an email to him it will notify that reporting person to the whom this operator is reporting so understand see oh, everything okay, okay. Okay. means hierarchically it will go right hierarchically it will report Okay, got it. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, okay. Let me tell you another thing. Uh, there are some cases where you will get a response from external system. Okay. Let's think. Okay, let's think. Suppose you have placed an order. Okay, you have placed an order. Your food was too bad. You have placed a replacement. Like replacement means you have contacted customer care. they have told you will get a refund okay refund okay when generally you will get in home day some two working days or three working days they will say right generally yes 
Okay, then what they will do? They will initiate a refund request in the background. Initiate refund request. Okay. What? How they will initiate? They will do some uh, thing and they will uh, initiate refund request and uh, some manager has to approve. Okay. A manager has to approve, then it will refund you. For that one, if suppose the deadline is one day, okay, the refund has to complete in two days actually, but the refund, but the deadline is one day, you assume. After one day, the manager is on leave or something. Then what happened? It was not actually approved. Then anyhow, the the user, the user in the sense, the customer representative has has actually initiated, right? Yes. If suppose the amount is less than three hundred, okay, you can configure on your own. If the if the amount is less than three hundred, then it can be auto submitted. Like it can automatically advance the flow. Advance the flow in the sense it will it can auto automatically move ahead. If if suppose without yeah, approval, yeah, without approval. If suppose no action is taken on some kind of assignment, okay. If suppose no action is taken on some kind of assignment. Then, if it is under the limits, like if it is suppose if if the if the if the amount is less than three hundred or something like that, then it will be like auto submitted. It Pega will has a capacity to advance the flow, advance in the sense it will move from one assignment to next assignment automatically without any user intervention. Okay. Okay. But that one you have to select advance flow. You have no different manager there. You have no click on that notify manager. You have advanced flow. So click on the drop down. Notify manager is there. You have advanced yes. flow. Okay. okay, advanced flow. It will ask for flow actions. In the flow, if you want to advance flow action, it must be there, right? You remember flow on a on a connector. You have flow actions. Mm -hmm. It will create a new flow action, so it will ask for a flow action. Okay, see, in my application, I will tell you. Actually, this should not be told, but uh, just for in a high level, I will tell you. My application is entirely time bound application. Okay, every process must be completed in sixty days or one twenty days based on a fraud. Okay, so if suppose something is not taken care by customer. Like customer in the sense, uh, yeah, some kind of analyst or uh, some kind of back office uh, or front office analyst. If if suppose some task is not performed by him within the stipulated time, okay, Pega it itself will advance the flow. Okay, Pega oh, will advance the flow and and complete the flow itself. Okay, based on the conditions. Now that is what customers are looking for. Now clients are looking for without human intervention. Case has to progress. Okay, why the yeah, end user is required to click on submit, cancel, or approve? Why user is required? You you actually define a condition. Based on that conditions, the systems will work. You understand that is what clients are expecting. Okay, based on SLS. Okay, if, if they will give some time. If suppose in that time, if it is not happening, you perform some action. If suppose that action is not listed here, you actually write your custom activity. You can actually cancel the claim, or you can do anything on an activity. Okay, activities are very powerful because you can make changes in databases. Now, how when SLA is linked to agent? We have discussed the agents uh, before SLS, right? Yes. Now, how when SLA is linked to agent? Suppose at deadline you have given two days. Okay. After two days, you are telling notify assignee. System has to do it, right? System has to do it means who will do in the background? Background agent only will do it. The background of SLA is also an agent. There is an agent in Pega called. If you go to agents, can you open the agent again? Yeah, here. Yeah, in system. You have an agent in the starting, right? Open agent instances. Here, agents you have Pega Procom, right? Pega Pro Procom, third one. Ah, yes, yes. This is an SLA agent. You see, service level events. There is an agent called service level agents. And service level agents. 
this is an agent responsible for SLA. Okay, the background of it, it will process the event. That activity will process the event. Okay, it will manage all the SLAs in an application. This is all Pega has given. You have to configure an SLA. You have to submit this SLA on some flow, flow level or or an on a particular task. Then whenever the time is completed after two days is done, you have to advance the flow. Who will advance the flow? Agent in the background. Whenever the time is completed, it will do it. See, agents are background processing. SLA is a time bound thing. Whenever the time is completed, this the background of SLA is also an agent. So whenever this time is completed, that agent will invoke. And okay. people will ask you if suppose something went wrong in SLA, how do you trace it? Okay, tracing in tracing an SLA is nothing but tracing an agent. Because background of SLA is agent, right? So you have to trace an agent to, to debug an SLA. Suppose you have given us uh, to actually advance a flow. Uh, in our application, the flow will not get advanced many times. That is a very headache, okay? Flow is not getting advanced. So in production, what happens? All the cases will get stuck at that particular thing. That is not a good practice, right? That is not business expects. Right. Business expects the flow has to get processed. Why the flows are getting stuck at a particular assignment shape, particular task. Should not happen actually. Right? Majorly in production, these type of issues you should not encounter. Then how do you debug it? You have to trace the agent. Which agent you have to trace? Agent name is service level events. And the rule set name is Pega Procom. ID is Pega Procom. Agent name is service level agents. This agent you have to trace it. And then you have to debug it. And uh, once you go to the advanced agent, I need to tell, sorry, once you go to SLA, I need to tell one more. Without this, it will be incomplete. Go to the SLA. Okay, this is an SLA, right? See, if you suppose a Google is passed, a deadline is passed, and uh, he, he has notified the manager, but still the task is pending. Okay, still the task is pending. Now, in the scenario, we have to do some kind of handling, right? Yeah. We have passed a deadline. If you come down, come down, you have passed a deadline. See, you have passed a deadline. Means after the deadline is also passed, then you can limit the passed deadline. Means you can give five, ten, like that. And you can perform action, like you have given five. And you have given it, and you have given five days. Then what will happen for every five days, for five times, it will notify the manager until that is done. If suppose Sonali is an analyst. For Sonali, the goal time is one day and the deadline is two days. And the party deadline is three days. One, two, th and three, okay? And the party deadline events is five events. Five events means uh, there you have one, right? There it is five, okay? Now, Sonali has crossed the goal time. It's okay. I, the system is notifying Sonali. Please perform the task. Uh, and she has crossed the deadline time. System is notifying manager that so-and-so operator has doesn't completed the task. And uh, after that, uh, after the deadline is also reached, still the Sonali hasn't completed the task. Then what will happen? You have limited the events, right? If you have given, suppose you have given, something called uh, 10 events, okay? It will repeat the process, this uh, deadline, pass it deadline, will perform this pass it deadline event, not the deadline event or goal event. It will process this pass it deadline event is there, right? Action, the last action. Correct, you have this action right up beside to it. Yeah, this action. It will perform that action that many times. For those many days let's uh, keep it simple pass a deadline is a repetitive event okay it will repeat those many times goal will occur one time deadline will occur one time but pass a deadline is a repetitive count oh, okay. it will keep on notifying it's okay. an option to only calculate on business days that option you have right on the top also you have the checkbox it below to calculate the time so only on business days, business calendar. No, no, below only have right for everything. 
for inside goal you have the check box you no know, inside goal inside deadline only calculate using business days ah, yes, yeah that yes. one so it will calculate those timelines and dates days only on business days and again in holidays also it will ignore but how system know yes days because in india public holidays are different in us it is different right yes these are all very interlinked actually if you open your operate if you open your operate that is already open the next tab in the okay. admin the before yeah you got up the time time no, limit no. will be there the business calendar is there on the top it will default on the on the right hand side yeah there you uh, feel yes. that us default open that one you can the organization can set the calendar if you open that one just click on crosser icon based on your operator calendar it will actually take the business day see the working hours see the closed holidays is there see the you come down 2000 those are all public holidays for us calendar okay january 1st is a holiday oh, december yeah. 15th yes. if if suppose an employee is working in india he will just simply save as this uh, calendar he will create instead of us default he will create something yeah. called india. all the operators who are working in india will be having that calendar correct the pega is a very powerful tool okay you have to know each and everything to better understanding see today how many you saw the reporting structure is there in your operator the calendar is there in your operator profile Understand? Yes. You can also configure unavailable from. You see, unavailable from is there. Schedule if you are on leave. Okay. You can uh, schedule one, so no one will assign a task to you. Suppose you are unavailable for two days. Okay. Then, uh, then the yes, SLS will not get calculated. Some some logic is there. Okay. And uh, one more thing you have to understand in a SLS is like urgency. Okay. Uh, Agency, you have agency there. If you open an SLA rule, you have an agency. Right on the top, you have initial agency. Right on the start. Yes. Agency in the sense, see, initial agency is twenty-five. Whenever you you have you added your item to the cart, the agency will be actually from zero to hundred. Okay, yes. zero to hundred. Whenever you added your product to your cart, it will be like twenty-five. Okay, whenever the goal time is reached, then ever then you see there is an amount to increase the agency, right? You can see that the amount increase. Agency. It will increase from twenty-five plus ten. Then after the deadline is also reached, come now. It will be thirty-five plus ten. Yes. The case agency will become forty-five. whenever pass it deadline is also reached then it will be become 15 then from here it will keep on increasing 15 until 100 okay now what is the purpose of urgency what is the purpose of urgency i will tell you okay now let us assume you you have logged a complaint okay you have logged a complaint uh, through a portal you have some uh, suppose you have purchased one uh, appliance like washing machine or television that was got uh, some problem then you have raised a complaint like without actually calling a customer care or you have raised one complaint okay then what you will get you will get one complaint id right complaint id is nothing but case id your case id that is will be unique id right yes. that case id now all the analysts will be working on each and every complaint id suppose i am an analyst okay i i, I am working on from morning or oh, oh, actually from i have actually logged in. now i am actually working on the like i am actually working on the assignment now suppose you have raised a complaint long back like uh, one week back let's say you okay and my neighbor has it has purchased the same appliance with some different problem he has raised a complaint yesterday okay now how a partiality works here is like i know him so i will ask his customer id or some complaint id he will or else he will come and tell me like uh, i have bought your appliance like it was 
యాక్చువల్లీ సమ్ ఇష్యూ అయితే కెన్ యూ రిజాల్వ్ ఇట్ దెన్ వాట్ జనరలీ పీపుల్ విల్ డూ పీపుల్ విల్ టేక్ దట్ కంప్లైంట్ దే విల్ ట్రై టు రిజాల్వ్ ఇట్ రైట్ ఇట్ ఈస్ నాట్ హ్యాపనింగ్ యాజ్ పర్ అర్జెన్సీ ఇట్ ఈస్ హ్యాపనింగ్ యాజ్ పర్ ద రిలేషన్ లైక్ కస్టమర్ రిలేషన్ లైక్ సి యూ హ్యావ్ రేజ్ ద రిక్వెస్ట్ టు అ పోర్టల్ మై నైబర్ హ్యాస్ ఆల్సో రేజ్ ద రిక్వెస్ట్ టు పోర్టల్ but you are waiting for the analyst to complete to work on your request but my neighbor came to me as a as he has actually i know him so he came to me he gave me the customer id or complaint id and he told me uh, i have got so on so problem can you please process it i should not do in that okay. way because first you have raised a complaint people has to work on your request correct, correct. although your yes. case is having highest urgency but still what a analyst will do because the complaint is uh, happening with his friend or some neighbor he will try to work on their request right? this will happen most of the time so sometimes if you went any any uh, government office or anything like that they will process the request which are in favor of them right yes correct right. actually who has applied first or not in such manner so to avoid these kind of things what pega has uh, came up pega has came up with a fun- functionality called get next work okay write it down get next work g n w get next work you can write it on a notepad okay that is called get next work okay get next work is based on many parameters like it is based on urgency it is based on case status it is based on work baskets or work is based on all the thing it will pick one case if you go to your launch a portal launch a portal i'll show you where that get next to will be there case manager i think for manager it will be there or not i'm not sure but let's see you understand get next work see remember the sentence get next work is nothing but it is an pega code it is also back end code which assigns appropriate case to analysts without picking them you click on the dashboard you have a dashboard right click on dashboard generally you should have the get next uh, you uh, 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 expand pega pulse or you click on my work list click on my work list on the left side yeah no click on my cases see here you will have the get next work actually okay i think on the top they have given next assignment they have given it click on the next assignment is it assigning any case to you yeah, okay it showing there are no assignments available for you to work on generally this is how it will work it will there will be one button called get next work you can search in google also get next work function in pega what it will do based on urgency okay the urgency whatever the cases is having highest urgency based on some statuses there is some logic involved on get next work functionality based on that logic it will pick one appropriate case for that user the system only will assign the case okay he cannot choose whatever the case he wants to work on system will assign it to him automatically system will only assign one case to the user to work on it based on urgency because system is telling this is an urgent case you work on this one first got it for that one is urgency is required urgency is like if you increase the urgency what will happen whenever people coming some get next and all then uh, that those 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 cases which are having highest urgency will get picked up by the customers like not the customers the users the business users the the operators who are working on the organization and get next work is all a uh, entire whole new topic like new topic in the sense in, in our applications okay i have customized the entire get next work functionality Uh, customize in the sense uh, what we will do they will give a based on application okay they will give uh, so many parameters like generally how get next work work is like you will be having based on urgency based on case status whether it is a new case or 
or it is an existing case or some state it will pull one case for the user but you can customize it okay like customize in the sense our application is some dispute application okay if suppose there is one case which was created for 10 dollars today not today for one month back some user has created 10 dollars case okay now that urgency is some 60 urgency 60 now this case was created one week back and today and today morning some user has created some fraud case for for 1 million dollars now you tell me which is then get next work case on which case you you has to work either the like for today's case the for today's case the urgency is 25 only but for previous case the urgency is 60 but which case should we work on when you click on get next work that customer must get the another customer when you click on get next work the user who is using the application must get the this case because this is very priority you have your bank account has lost 1 million dollars today some fraud has happened to you if suppose it has it has happened for 10 dollars bank might give the 10 dollars to you that is not a problem right but the 1 million dollars is a huge fraud right you have to customize your get next work functionality for the parameters like the business will tell you okay. if suppose the dispute amount is so and so okay and suppose it is happened from yes. customer or premium customer like that they will tell you if suppose you are a bank uh, bank customer existing customer very old customer you are having a security deposit of uh, like not security deposit you are having a fixed deposit or savings of so many crores of rupees gets priority basis customer yeah if you yeah. raise it to 50 dollars so you will cases will get will get picked up on get next work you can search for get next work on the top search get next work you can search the search bar is there right on the top there you can search that uh, get next work you will be happening on a report def- list view will be there list view is a rule for report definition in pega 6 version you used to list view come down list view l letter l you will have yeah deprecated list view is there right get next work all the first one you can click on the first one see this is the back end rule that will get executed okay this one you have to customize it actually you click on that one open it will open if you click it will open one a kind of report definition but this is list view list view is a old version like see agency is a old version for job schedulers right similarly list view is a old yes. version for report definition so if you go to content tab go to content see there is a logic right a or b or a or b and c and d they are actually this is a default get next work functionality they are checking urgency you see d and e rows d and e py urgency assign px urgency assign assigned ah, operator see, they are checking on assign urgency but this logic you have to customize okay here you have to customize it your own logic you have to give in a filters and all then it will pick the correct assignment for you based on a business requirement how business is asked Okay. Which assignment has to be prioritized? Everything you have to customize and get next work here. Okay. Got it. Okay. Any question? This is all uh, on CWC. You will get uh, much more deeper knowledge. Okay. All these rules, get next work, and all. What we have discussed today: agents. We have discussed the types of agents: advanced agents, standard agents, and the job schedule and queue process. How actually it will involve. or actually the agent activity in which scenario you will use which thing like here for notifications what you will use for a case processing what you will use how actually what is the difference between standard and advanced and uh, and you came to sla what is an sla sla is a time bound process how to define an sla and when to how to configure an sla what is a goal time what is the deadline time pass it in then you don't worry okay by time you will understand it okay if you didn't you have much clarity it's okay but you remember pass it deadline is the yeah, pass it deadline is a repetitive one okay that might be a certification question okay pass it deadline is a repetitive one goal and deadline will only invoke only one and you have actions to perform like notify assignee notify user or uh, some actions you have 
you can perform those actions when our goal and deadline time is reached and you have an urgency what is the purpose of urgency you will increase the urgency on deadline and goal and uh, pass the deadline what is the main use of urgency based on urgency the get next functionality will be depending on when uh, if suppose any cases of highest urgency then that case will get picked up to the customer that is called get next work functionality that is for uh, assigning appropriate cases to an users okay without randomly picking and all users will get uh, some cases okay based on the logic which we have customized here now let me tell you work groups and work queues first let us work queues or buckets are same the name was changed in latest versions work queues but the queues is the latest version u u v u e work queue slash work basket both are same work basket basket okay both are same both are same. don't separate them both are same. okay now let me tell you what is a work basket see i am habituated using a word work basket okay because when i have done my certification when i was used to work i used to use work basket only so i am using work basket only but both are same okay class session here no no right i am using work basket the word but both are same work basket and work queues are the same okay now i'll tell you one example okay suppose you have called a customer care okay it is asking like for english press 1 for telugu press 2 for hindi plus 3 like that it will ask right yes whenever you press that yeah, uh, whenever you press that uh, uh, number there is some uh, frequency and all based on that frequency it will assign your uh, call to that particular person right that language speaking person right now similarly whenever you are applying for a passport let's assume you have a passport application you are applying for a passport now it will ask you to select a passport regional office right suppose you are up- applying from uh, andhra pradesh because i am from andhra pradesh just i am telling you yeah, in andhra pradesh there are some passport regional offices like uh, uh, there is one office in visakhapatnam there is one office in vise uh, there is one office in vijayawada now it will ask uh, you to choose a passport regional office which office is near to your location or or your village or your home it will come in under which uh, under which regional passport office right so if suppose i uh, my location is coming under visakhapatnam okay i will choose my passport regional office in visakhapatnam and i will schedule an appointment now whenever i schedule an appointment what happens i need to go to the Vij- uh, visakhapatnam sir office right o- office location correct right? and the visakhapatnam people only will take care of my requests or approvals or anything or passport document verification or anything that regional office will take care of my thing okay this is one example okay i'm i'll tell you another example okay. suppose you have raised any customer complaint then what will happen you have you are actually raising from india there is an amazon dot in you are raising from india and dilip is based out of us suppose then he he will be raising a customer complaint then it will go for us operators right now this yes. uh, category is there right visakhapatnam regional office or us people or uh, or indian uh, uh, indian customer care representatives these are all in a one basket okay this is called work basket okay i'll tell you work basket contains work items okay work is a basket of work items the name represents itself right It's a basket of work items where people can pick and work the item. If suppose I have I I am in a passport regional office of Vishakhapatnam, my request will be in Vishakhapatnam work basket. Okay, the the name of a work basket is Vishakhapatnam, and the Vishakhapatnam holds suppose hundred hundred work items. Then from those hundred work items, operator will pick one work item and process one. work basket holds work work items if suppose you are logging a customer complaint from india india will be having one work basket for amazon okay whenever you are logging in a complaint your complaint will be routed that is called routing okay your complaint will be routed routed in the sense moved 
their complaint will be routed to india work basket then people who have access to that work basket can work on it now how should we give this access to an operator where should we give this access to an operator if you open your operator profile administrator you have opened it delete all the yes yeah, if you go to work tab come down see work queue sorry work go to work tab the work queue is there and work queue is nothing but work basket come down see work queue is there right if you click on plus sign you click on plus sign it will ask you to add a work queue you to your operator so what will happen work queue if you give one work queue this particular work queue has the access to you oh, okay process, right? if you have selected feed it's if broken if any if any item is in a broken process work bar broken process ah uh, yes you save it save it save it and if you go to your portal the portal you have launched right what happened not all okay this is an admin operator right you will not have an access to modify but if you go to your portal user portal is there right manager portal you have launched if you click on dashboard click on dashboard on the right right side you have the work baskets come down here you have team members and right? similarly see work queues it will be showing here what are the work queues you have access so you can click on your work queues it is showing zero zero item right so there is no no work items on in, in that work queue okay you understand ah uh, yes 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 click on work basket if you are if you click on the work queue it will open up that work queue and show you if any if any assignments are there you just click on any of the work basket you go to the top See, there is no see work in the work queue record is zero. See work queue is empty. It's showing right below. Yeah, work right. all the cases here. Okay, you can pick the case. Okay, if you have ten cases, you can choose which case you can select. Ah, okay. You understand work queue, work queue or work basket are nothing but it's a basket of work items where user can actually pick and work. and uh, this get next work functionality is there right suppose you are of india okay and you click on get next work you should not get a work item from us right no you should get a work item from in india only because you are you have only access to work basket if you come down yes yes come down in the operator see you have uh, check boxes get from work queues first use all queues assignment these are all these are all get next work functionalities okay if you select to get from work queues first okay it will get your work item from work queue okay now i'll tell you what is list okay what is your work if suppose i am a manager of dilip let us i have assigned dilip one case take one case instance one complaint i have assigned to dilip particular now that assignment will present in a work list work list in a sense those are only specific to the list you understand work basket means those work items are specific to all the operators who have the access like anyone can work either dilip can work or can work this all he if the person assigned work list okay then what you have work on it definitely that is only specific to you work list if you have any case okay that case is only for you that case will not be visible for any other operator that is specific for you you, you only have to work on it. yes now if you click on that uh, go to your operator now if you select this one come down yeah if you select this get from work queues first okay if suppose you have two cases with the same criteria two different complaint same criteria same same urgency from 95 95 if you select that you get from work queue first if you click on get next work then which is in work basket will come first to you to work on that 
let me tell you you have to two complaints okay mm-hmm. one complaint is a1 complaint is a2 okay okay two complaints are of same scenario like same complaints two are having same urgency like uh, 95 95 but one a1 is in your work list that is you have you only have to work on it. but a2 is in your work basket means anyone can work on okay. it now yes. in your operator you have selected this one get from work first and you have clicked on get next one then which one will be get next one will pick from work basket because you have selected this one right you are telling get the cases from work queues first if suppose urgency is not same then it will pick which hour is having more urgency so it will how it will sort okay let me tell you if suppose you have a two you have two cases of urgency 90 and 95 in your work basket okay okay and you have one case with urgency 100 in your work list oh. mm-hmm. still it will pick from work basket only 95 Correct. No matter what, it will sort. First, it will sort on work basket, and then it will sort on work list, and then it will start assigning. You have merge work queues, right? The merge work queues. If suppose you have ten work queues, like we have ten work baskets per operator, it will basically how pega will work is like it will pick from uh, highest work baskets items. I think. Like I was also not sure, but uh, if you if we didn't select that one. If suppose one work basket is having hundred cases, another work basket is having twenty cases. First, it will uh, try to assign you from hundred work basket cases because it thinks like uh, that is a more urgent thing because it is hundred pending. But uh, if you select to merge work queues, then it will merge everything, like uh, like without a count and all. It will merge all the work items, and from all the work items, it will pick you one work item to work on. It will. Uh, Club all the work baskets and then it will pick one case yes. from all the things. Yeah. Okay. See, this is all get next work functionality. Okay, this is actually out of uh, our topic. This is CWC thing, but still you have a basic idea, right? What is a get next work or not? And the work queues you want to queues and work list. Okay, and the work group you will be having. Work group is a very basic uh, thing. Like uh, there is no standard definition for work group. Work group, if you are working for any any organization for a claim organization, like you are working from an insurance company, and uh, you are having a work group of claim. Okay. Work group is something like the division. If you are working in a in in a in a in a one company only, but the division is different. One 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 person. If suppose you are working in Infosys. You are uh, for a uh, you are in a development team. Some people will be in some income tax department or some P A or financial department, right? So the work group will be different. Your work group is different from their work group. Okay, work group. Uh, there is no proper definition for it, but uh, you can search in the Google what is the work group in Bengal. But what I told you understand, right? Work group I need to cross functional team that contains managers and operators. This is your work group. They will say. So work group contains everything. Means suppose you are in working from financial department. Financial department contains set of operators, set of work queue, set of managers. That entire department is called work group. You can see that image. Yeah, this is a Pega Seven image. This is good. This is all called the work group. Yeah, this is one accounting work group. There is one onboarding work group. Yeah. Okay. This work group is not that important, and you can define your work group on your operator only. If you go to the designer studio, yeah. If you open your operator, yeah. You see, the team is there, right? Team. Team is default. If you click on that default on the left side, yeah. If you open it, 
இவ்வளவு பண்ண வருக்கிறோம் See, this is a work group. Rule is a work group. For this work group, so that person is a manager. That is a default work basket. Means, uh, that organization must have, that uh, department must have one work basket, right? To hold all the cases. So that is a default work basket. That is a manager ID. This is all something, uh, no one will change all these things. Generally, once the application was created, your architect will create one work group and all. he will take care of this see some kind of task will be assigned to some work baskets okay yes some sir kind of yeah. first there is some assignment called disputes is there if suppose it's a fraud dispute it will be assigned to some uh, kind of work basket if suppose a non fraud non fraud in the sense uh, your money was debited twice with your uh, knowledge only first time you have swiped your card it was not debited second time again you have swiped then twice you have debited then such kind of transactions are called non fraud transactions then those kind of uh, cases will be routed to different work groups not a different work group different work queues queues are work baskets cases generally they will route okay that is called routing routing the cases to that particular work basket if you open a flow can you once open a flow the last thing i want to show click on the process on the left hand side you can click on you can expand the process flow is there na yeah open uh, click on flow open in unique flow now where to define this work basket okay how to define the work basket and where to see you have learned the sla but where to give the sla you have to know right where to where to refer the sla no not this flow this is some uh, this is some what is that called this called stub flow can you open it Oh, this doesn't have any. Can you open any other? Keep it like this. You can open. You can. Yeah. Okay, this is good. Okay, now this is a flow, right? If you saw where to define an SLA. SLA is a time-bound process. You can define an SLA for entire process, or you can define an SLA for particular task. Like similarly, you can define an SLA for adding your item to the cart. for that cart purpose you can define an sla or you can define an sla for entire your order right see entire process might have some time this process must be completed in this time or entire process each task might have some time right that if you click on the process you have on the top tab you have process right you are in diagram tab process yeah, okay. Come down, come down, come down, come down. See service level agreement is this. If you define your uh, service level agreement here, this uh-huh. SLA, okay. this post deadline time will be applicable for entire flow. Mm-hmm. Okay, goal and deadline will be applicable for entire flow. You need to refer your rule here. Whatever the rule you have created, that rule must be defined it here. Okay, okay. Okay, if you scroll to the top. if you go to diagram no first step first step and if you open any assignment you open that upload a file is right upload a file assignment assignment is in green color if you double click on it it will open or you can define an sla for a particular assignment also for uploading a file okay that assignment name is upload a file For uploading a file, you have two days of time. Come down, see, come down. There is an SLA. See, no, no, no. Click to the top right here. Okay, you can define two individual SLAs. To upload a file, you can define one SLA. To whole process, you can define one SLA. And if you go to your uh, this thing, uh, go to your uh, flow diagram again, 
and uh, i know want to show you one more thing no no the flow on the the diagram diagram that here if you open the upload a file again you private it this one first click on upload a file see it is routing is there right who has to work on this particular task uh-huh. it has to route to custom custom work list work list means particular operator will work if you click on work queue that so work queue means work basket now this task will be routed to that particular work queue work queue means work basket people who have access to this work queue can work on it can perform on it. feedback is there a broken process yeah i saw it previously whenever some uh, a decision is not clearly mentioned in flow limit then cases will go to py py broken queues or ah, yes. py flow error it will and if you click and see the routing you have different uh, configurations also here you can route okay click on the route for queue current operator who is working on current or custom custom you can mention or business logic they will ask the custom means it is asking some configurations this is all uh, advanced things okay you just need to go, go through these things okay? but the basic idea is same route in a sense who is going to work on it route yeah. means you are yes. different user or different operator or a different work bus and they if you click on the uh, case type case type on the left side extreme left you have case steps extreme left recent case type app explorer data explorer yeah this is the connector you click on case type on the left side you have extreme left you have case type right extreme left yeah there Open any case type. We have. Oh, we don't have any case types. No, generally, no, that that. Yeah, that generally, you can configure a case type. You can configure an SLA and case type also. Okay, you okay. have three. You have three ways. Of three. Ways. What I could remember is that you can refer your SLA. One is on case type. Entire. One is on flow level. One is on assignment level. Okay. these are all things which you have understood till now is mostly a part of csf yeah in case aws there are deeper understanding so you can actually relate how actually what to... and you have so many options if you can go to configure click on configure uh, user interface user interface last one I'll show you how powerful Pega is going to be. Gallery is there. It over on gallery. Go to UI elements. Go to UI elements. See these many things you can configure in Pega UI. If you see here, gallery UI elements, you can close few which are not required. The Pega Pro com. Those are all interview questions. Okay, what is the background age and all? Here, if you saw that UI element, uh, right? Yeah, let's see. Okay, let's see. Let's thumb down. You just shop, shopping the cart. Shopping cart is there. Right? Click on shopping cart. Sorry. Shopping oh. cart. The last. See these kind of UIs also you can build in Pega. Generally, we will develop a boring UI, right? See, you can click on add to cart. See how good this UI they have developed in Pega. Click on add to cart. It will add your item to the cart. It will calculate the price. how good this looks actually but these are all so many advanced functionalities are there in pega then you have to explore them based on your requirements okay you can see you there are many other uh, you can uh, go back or you can click on top recently visited and i have recently visited right? on the top uh, on the top right side and right yeah oh it's no 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 how to go back 
I think uh, you can search it on that uh, search icon is there. Right? Click on down. You click on your yeah no. That magnifier glass icon is there. It auto complete. Beside recently visited. There one text box is there. No no. Beside recently visited, there is an auto complete right. That is called auto complete. Yeah, click on it and click on down arrow. Okay, this here you are getting these things. Huh? Okay, then you have that one, right? See your business card. You have you can check. Okay, these are all Pega sample UIs. You have business card. See also is there and right? on the right side, right side business card. Yeah. See this is how you can develop. See how good this is. This form looks like collecting information only, but still it it actually looks good, right? You can yes. see it. Again. You can use a live UI. You can see it from the back end how actually they have developed these kind of things. Yeah, you can click on view design and configuration also. You can open how they have uh, configured these things. Okay, these are all sample. Okay, sample things which Pega has provided. Then we can wind up uh, today here.